Hi everyone and welcome to this video which focuses on the accommodation theory, a really useful theory to be aware of for A-level English language. So in today's video we will go over what the accommodation theory is, examples of the accommodation theory in speech and writing and how to write about the accommodation theory. So let's start with looking at what the accommodation theory is. This is a theory that was originally coined by someone called Howard Giles, and it suggests we change our language to accommodate the person or persons we are speaking to. There are two parts to this theory, the first being convergence, when we change and adapt our language to be more similar to someone else, and divergence, where we purposely move our language styles further apart from others. The only other key term you need to know with this is if two people converge, or move their language styles closer to each other. This is called mutual convergence. So let's start by looking at the convergence section of this theory, where we're purposely moving our language to be more similar to someone else's. Now I've put a few different examples on the screen of where we might see convergence being used. We'll start with the one in red, moving to another part of the country. Now, if we imagine you were from London and you moved or were visiting someone in Manchester and you wanted to ask for a bread roll, in London, we would call that a bread roll. In Manchester, you might find yourself calling it a barn cake, or in Leicestershire, you might converge and ask for a cob instead. So I think this is one of those really easy to spot examples of convergence, when we see people start to pick up on and mirror the dialect or sociolect of those around them. Here we have a student speaking to a teacher, which I'm sure we can all imagine. If you're speaking to a teacher or lecturer, you're likely to converge and speak in a more formal and perhaps more adult manner than you do when you're speaking with your peers. I thought it'd be a good idea to have a few written examples, even though this theory is mostly used for spoken language. So here we have a journalist writing for a specific newspaper or magazine. And if we think about the, news, uh, the Sun newspaper, for example, which is known to be written in a style which can be understood by those with a reading age of eight, as a journalist who is likely to have a much higher reading and writing age, if you were writing for the Sun newspaper, you would change your language in order to converge to the target audience. Similarly, if you were an adult and you were writing for a teenage magazine, you would do something along the same lines. Here we have a parent speaking to a young child. So we might expect convergence through easier words, or if it's a really young child, maybe speaking slower. Anyone who does A-level English language and studies child language development might know this to be part of child-directed speech. In blue, we have a native speaker making their language easier for a non-native speaker, which in a similar way to the last one, you might expect a native speaker would accommodate a non-native speaker's needs by slowing down what they are saying and using easier language. And finally, we have another written example, writing a letter applying for a job. If you're writing an application for a job, you would likely write more formally than you would usually and purposely use words to make yourself sound more intelligent. So these are just some examples of convergence and hopefully you may now be able to think of some of your own as well. Okay, now we've looked at the convergence side, let's have a quick look at divergence, when a speaker purposely makes their style of speech less like those they are with. Now from experience, this seems to be a lot less regular than convergence and as we move through the examples, you might start to see why. So the first example we have is someone trying to show off their extensive knowledge on a subject. This may use divergence as someone uses purposely difficult lexis to either impress or confuse the person they are speaking to, perhaps to show a higher social status. Next, we have a couple of written examples. The first one being writing a letter to show frustration. You can imagine if you were really frustrated let's say with a particular company and wanted to get a reaction, someone using divergence through expletives and strong imperatives in contrast to any politeness that has occurred before between the customer and the company might get a bigger reaction and a quicker result. The other written example I have is writing an article to create a particular voice. And this might be one you've come across in some of the texts you've studied, or if you've done any creative coursework yourself, you might have taken on a particular voice. If I was trying to write something that was purposely controversial, I might use particular lexis and diverge from my normal vocabulary in order to do this to get a bigger reaction from my audience. The next one, people from different places who want to show off their identity. 
I think the easiest, easiest example might be in the world of sport, where if we have two football fans who are very proud of their teams and who they support, and let's say one's from the north and one's from the south, they may purposely use dialect from their areas to show this and to keep their language apart from their rivals. You might notice this next one is similar to one from Convergence, but this time it's a native speaker making their language more difficult for a non-native speaker. If you didn't want someone to understand what you were saying or purposely wanted to leave them out or make them feel inferior, you might use purposely difficult words more than you usually would in order to achieve this. And finally, we have a child in conflict with their parent. If a child wanted to be purposely difficult, they might diverge their language by hardly saying anything or giving one word answers to longer questions or using words and phrases they know their parent will struggle to understand to cause a greater conflict. What you might have started to notice about quite a few of the examples on this slide is that those using them would be purposely not adhering to any politeness principles and using divergence to perhaps cause more division between themselves and those they are speaking to. This is why I think we see divergence less than convergence, as it's not easy to accommodate someone's way of speaking if your style is purposely different to theirs. OK, so let's have a look at a real life example of convergence and the accommodation theory. So I'm going to read this out and then it might be a good chance for you to pause the video and see what examples of convergence you can see. So we have a conversation between John and Tim. John says, hi, mate, how are you? Tim replies, I'm good, mate. It's proper balmy outside today, isn't it? How are you? John then says, yeah, it is balmy. I'm good. Did you manage to amalgamate those documents I sent you? Tim then asks, amalgamate? John, put together. Did you manage to put all those documents I sent you together? Tim then replies, yes, they are amalgamated. I put it on your desk this morning. And John finishes the conversation with, OK, cheers, mate. So now would be a really good chance to pause the video, have a look at this conversation on your own and see what examples you can see. So hopefully you've had a chance to look at some examples on your own and you've seen some examples of convergence. I'm just going to talk you now through the examples that I've picked out and that I've purposely put into this conversation. So if we start with the word mate being used, this is a colloquial term. It's quite a friendly term. We've got John using it at the very start. Hi, mate. Tim then responding with I'm good, mate, almost mirroring his language back to him. And then we have John ending with it as well. So this is a common lexis that both of the participants in this conversation are using. And therefore, we're seeing convergence because it's they're mirroring each other's language. We then have the word balmy, which you may or may not know is a word which means when it's quite warm outside. So we have Tim saying it's proper balmy outside. Again, we've got convergence with John then using the same word, the same lexis, balmy, and we're seeing that mutual convergence between them, where their language is being similar and being mirrored by each other. Now, I think it's really important that we don't uh, sort of think that any word that is used by both participants in a conversation is convergence, but I think this would be an example of it because it's quite a low frequency word and it's a typical dialect word as well, balmy as not everybody would use it. So therefore, that is quite a good example of that. This is probably the most interesting example of convergence we have, though. We have um, John asking if Tim has been able to amalgamate the documents that he was sent. We then have the interrogative amalgamate, Tim sort of showing that he doesn't maybe understand what that word means. We then have John changing his Lexis in order to accommodate Tim. So he changes amalgamate to put together, which is what amalgamate means. So he says, put together. Did you manage to put the documents I sent you together? So we see convergence here with John changing what he has said in order to accommodate Tim not understanding the word amalgamate. We then see Tim using convergence because he responds by using the Lexis that uh, John has previously used. So he says, yes, they are amalgamated. I put them on your desk this morning. So there's lots of really good examples in here. There's also examples of politeness principles in here as well. The fact that John starts by asking how he is before going into asking about whatever it documents it is that he wants as well. So this is a really good example of seeing that convergence in practice.
So as usual, we'll now look at how we would actually write about the accommodation theory in practice. I've taken the short text that we've just looked at and I've written that into an essay style answer. So I've said in this conversation between John and Tim, which we can assume takes place in a workplace environment, we see multiple examples of the two speakers using convergence in order to adhere to common politeness principles and to make sure they both have the same understanding of the work task. John begins by using the colloquial term mate when asking how Tim is. This is then mirrored by John in his next utterance. Tim also uses some specific dialect here to describe the weather, balmy, which John then repeats, suggesting they are either from the same area or that John is using convergence to bring his speech closer to Tim's, perhaps because he is about to ask him about a piece of work and because they are friendly with each other. Mutual convergence is used by both speakers when Tim struggles to understand the word amalgamate, and John then explains the meaning behind this low frequency lexis, changing his phrasing, phrasing to did you manage to put all those documents I sent you together, making his speech easier to understand. To show he now follows what John was saying, Tim now uses the past tense verb amalgamated to confirm the work has been completed and to accommodate John's lexis into his own. So you can see, as always, I've put any subject specific terminology in red, and hopefully this will give you a good idea of how you can actually write about the accommodation theory in practice. I hope this video was useful, and if so, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel.